If you like odd or weird animals, then boy do I have a treat for you. Now this is one funky looking dinosaur. Meet Nothronychus. You may have already guessed from those claws, but these guys belong to a family of dinosaurs known as Therizinosaurids. To be fair, its whole family is wonky. They weren't huge like some of their family members. They could get quite tall, but they were only about 14 feet long, about half the size of Therizinosaurus. Let's talk about their claws for a moment. Each claw could reach up to a foot in length. And yes, as you see here, they were probably useful for feeding, but in more ways than just grasping at trees. You see, these claws aren't sharp along the edges, but they are incredibly pointy. While they most likely could be used in defense, we know that that wasn't the claw's main purpose. More like a happy accident when they evolved their feeding strategies. One theory I've heard is they could possibly use their claws to root through the ground, digging up insects and various types of plants. A more widely accepted theory is that they used the claws to pull branches down and apart for easier access, which would have given them a food source few others had access to, which would have given them a little bit of an advantage. Curiously, scans of the brain case show us that they would have been capable of picking up low frequency sounds, which is usually only present in animals with complex social behaviors. It seems that Nothronychus is more than meets the eye. What's the weirdest looking extinct animal you've ever heard of? I'll go first. This. Adipo <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about these for a while. This alien looking thing is Opabinia. These guys are part of an ancient group of arthropods. They look so odd that at the first presentation unveiling these animals, the audience laughed. How dare they laugh at him? Their anatomy is no less wonky. The actual mouth is on the underside of the body, and it's assumed they use this proboscis similar to an elephant trunk. They'd use these multitudes of appendages and tail to swim around and search for prey likely sifting through the bottom of the seafloor. Oh, and they've got eyes for days. And they had compound eyes. If you already know about the mantis shrimp size, imagine that. However, if you were worried about being hurt by these guys, never fear. They were only a few inches long, and they would have hunted small, soft-bodied targets. There are multitudes of odd creatures out there, but these guys just might take the cake. A lot of dinosaurs, even sauropods, had spikes, but these dinosaurs take it to an extreme that few others reach. This is Bahadosaurus, a member of the Dicreosaur sauropods. These guys are related to the massive Diplocoidea, but they and their family don't quite reach those lengths. They and their family are defined by their more compact size and shorter necks. But to be completely fair, even some of the smallest sauropods would have been huge to us humans. But their most distinguishing trait is definitely those spines. There are two main theories to their function and appearance. The first being that these spines were covered in a keratin sheet. If that was the case, it could have doubled the length of the already two foot long spines and would have allowed Bahadosaurus to use those spines in self-defense. However, new research in 2022 shows us they may have had a layer of skin over their spines instead, similar to the Salin animals like Spinosaurus. If this theory is correct, they were most likely used for display and possibly thermoregulation uses. Everybody thinks of sauropods as the biggest and the baddest, which don't get me wrong, they are, but they are also wildly fascinating. Despite being animals known for their massive size, even they can surprise us. Magnificent. Concavenator is one of the weirdest carnivores we know of. These guys are a primitive carnivore of the Carcharodontosaur family, and they're related to animals like Giganotosaurus. Now, they aren't quite as large as their more famous cousins. Maxing out around 20 feet, they're a mid-sized theropod, but what they lack in size, they make up for in unique characteristics. Directly in front of the hips, they possess an elongated vertebrae that form a tall and narrow crest, which some scientists believe that in life supported a hump. Others think the hump, along with the quill knobs on their arm, are used for display instead. Those quill knobs are actually another feature unique to Concavenator. With the quills and a display crest instead of a hump, it could have been used to attract mates. But that theory has also been called into question. The more recent studies have claimed that those quill knobs were actually muscle attachments, similar to other more primitive carnosaurs. But the jury's still out on both accounts. We can't be certain without new fossils. But don't let all those wacky features fool you. They shared territory with myriads of other animals, including pterosaurs and other dinosaurs. And from what we could tell, they were the largest predators there. Few predators display so many unique characteristics in one. But when you've got millions of years of evolution on your side, I'm sure it's easier. One of the weirdest dinosaurs to ever exist, this is Dinochirus. And man, they've got a lot of wacky features. They're the largest of a group called Ornithomimosaurs, which are kind of weird in themselves. If you've seen the Jurassic Park films, these guys are part of that same group. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Though they're not related to Therizinosaurus, they have enormous arms just like those guys. It's currently assumed that they use those big claws to dig up plants from the bottom of riverbeds. You can get a first-hand glimpse of this in prehistoric planet. Coupled with those giant claws is that beak. Their beak is comparable to that of a pelican, and it takes up a majority of their face. The evidence suggests these guys were omnivorous, and likely used that beak to also help them catch fish. The beak would also make it easy for them to collect gastroliths, and one specimen was found to have over 1,400 gastroliths in its stomach. And it seems like it mainly lived an aquatic life, which is beneficial since it traded its speed for size. At their size, their only real predator would have been Tarbosaurus. But if your only predator is the equivalent to Tyrannosaurus, you're doing pretty well. Sometimes it's weird and wacky that wins the day. That's nature for ya. Knowing animals like this existed at one point make me understand why people were afraid of the ocean. This animal is known as Dunkleosteus. These Nightmare Nemos come in a 10-pack. 
with the largest one reaching up to 29 feet in length. They lived over 300 million years ago during the Devonian, where they ruled over the seas. And with the Devonian looking like this, that meant they ruled over a lot. They were the largest of a group known as placoderms. And while they don't have teeth in a traditional sense, that armor forms into some sort of beak that can bite down about 1500 PSI. And more recent studies showed us that they look similar to sharks. Minus, you know, the vampire dentures. Biomechanical studies show that their jaws could open within 60 milliseconds, which means they probably ate like groupers using a sort of suction feeding, following it up with one of those powerful bites. Which means for this guy, there is no happy ever after. At least Dunkleosteus isn't around today, but it really makes you wonder what else the ocean is hiding from us. And if you want to learn more about prehistoric animals, be sure to check out my page. Saw was a mating display of Carnotaurus. Ever since that episode of Prehistoric Planet came out, a lot of people have asked me if that was plausible. So I'm here to tell you why it is. For a long time, it was thought that the tiny arms were useless. Similar to a human tailbone, they were thought to just be evolutionary leftovers. Despite being so small, they were incredibly well-muscled. Right above their arm here is their shoulder girdle. This girdle is enormous and holds multiple places for the muscles to attach. You can see how the arm fits snugly into the girdle. That's because right here is a ball and socket joint. Much like humans, this would allow them to rotate their arms in a circular motion. So why would they have such tiny but mobile arms? Well, just like other animals with similarly useless traits, it would be used for mating. The arms may have been brightly colored and then put on display for potential partners. And this type of display is not uncommon in the animal kingdom at all. They may be powerful predators, but they're more fascinating than anything. Personally, I love all sorts of dinosaurs. But after seeing the episode that featured Mononychus, I'd sell my soul just to pet it. And Mr. Attenborough's right, they're very specialized animals. Based on studies done on their close relative Shavuia, they likely had hypersensitive hearing, which would allow them to detect the faintest of sounds. And the brain casing of Shavuia is very close to a barn owl. These dinosaurs are often defined by these little nubs here, which is the single claw that gives them their name. These extremely cute dinosaurs were part of a group known as Alvarosaurids, a group of incredibly bird-like dinosaurs. And while they may have been partially omnivorous, more recent studies show that they were likely insectivorous. They'd use their incredible sense of hearing to track down the prey whether it be termites or this unfortunate little lizard. And these guys are by no means giants, and they're about the same size as your average dog. Except, you know, a dinosaur. These amazingly intricate animals lived in what is currently the Gobi Desert. And based on what we know, it was still a desert back then too. These cute guys lived challenging lives, but you have to admit they look great while doing it. Giant dinosaurs come in all shapes and sizes. Even some oviraptors got to try it out. Meet the Gigantoraptor. These massive bird-like dinosaurs could grow over 25 feet, and they got to that size pretty quick. Studies of their growth rings have showed us they could reach maturity at around age 7, putting on hundreds of pounds a year until they reached their full 2-ton size. They belong to a group of oviraptors known as Canagnathids, many of which sported feathery plumage, although some scientists speculate that due to its large size, Gigantoraptor lost some of its feathers. The curious part of this animal is their legs. Usually when a group of animals get bigger, their legs get shorter and stockier to support their weight, but not Gigantoraptor. They retained their long limbs and instead relied on lighter bones to get around. In comparison to other giant theropods, these guys may as well be sprinters. While it's assumed over raptorsaurs were mainly herbivorous, studies of the beak show was capable of shearing and may have been used in an omnivorous diet. But it probably wasn't a very selective feeder. Like many omnivores, probably would have just taken advantage of what was around. You know, just make the most out of what you got. They may be the odd man out when it comes to giant theropods, but they are incredibly fascinating. This is a Gorgonops. They're like saber-toothed cats before saber-toothed cats. And when I say before, I mean like way before. They lived over 250 50 million years ago during the Permian, which was the time before dinosaurs even existed. They possess saber-like teeth and triangular-shaped heads. Thanks to a show called Primeval, these guys often get confused with one of their relatives. That show and other media often call all these animals either Gorgonopsid or Gorgonopsia. Because of that and their similar-looking appearance, this animal in Austrinsevia is often confused for Gorgonops. One of the easiest way to tell the difference is by their size. In Austrinsevia are quite a bit larger than Gorgonops. Gorgonops and all its relatives belong to a group of animals named Therapsids, which also includes modern mammals. But Gorgonops isn't exactly a mammal itself, though Gorgonopsia were the dominant predators of their time. But like so many other animals, their success led to their downfall. The Permian extinction, otherwise known as the Great Dying, wiped out over 90% of life on Earth. And unfortunately, the Gorgonops and its relatives were among the dead. But other Therapsids lived on, and eventually they produced the mammals, which eventually produced us. This just might be the cutest pterosaur. Keyword might, but I'll get to that in a little bit. 
they're called Nemecolopterus. I know, the artist specifically drew them that way, but come on, you can't tell me these guys aren't cute. They're like the Porgs from Star Wars, except these guys are actually cute, unlike those little gremlins. They were discovered in 2008 and shown to have a wingspan of only 10 inches, and at the time, they were thought to be the smallest pterosaurs. A study done in 2021 shows they may have been a hatchling of another animal, Cenopterus, which unfortunately might make Nemecolopterus a gnomon dubium. However, if it was a hatchling, it would help us better understand Cenopterus and other pterosaur growth rates in general. The Cenopterus is also pretty significant because it was the first Tapajara pterosaur discovered outside of Brazil. If it is a juvenile, it could also lead to studies that would reclassify other pterosaurs in the area because the location in which they were discovered is housed to numerous different pterosaurs, a lot of whom bear striking resemblance to one another. Regardless, the whole point of this video is just to show you how cute they are. Because again, just look at them. We've all got someone in our life that we think is a little thick-headed sometimes, but even they couldn't beat this guy in that type of contest. These guys are known as Pachycephalosaurus. Their skull, which they're named after, is over 9 inches thick. They use it as a sort of battering ram. A study done in 2013 showed that adult Pachycephalosaurus had cranial damage. You see, their skulls are made up of a type of fibrolamellar bone, which contains cells called fibroblasts. This would allow Pachycephalosaurus to rapidly repair its skull. Seeing as it's their primary defensive weapon, you can understand why. And as you can see, members of their own species are not their only threat. There were loads of predators around, including Pectinodon, Dakotoraptor, and Tyrannosaurus itself. But there's something else even more fascinating about these guys. It was once believed that the dinosaurs Dracorex and Stigimolic were their own species. Based on studies done between 2007 and 2016, we now know that they're both juvenile Pachycephalosaurus, simply represent different growth stages of the same animal. But a study done in 2021 may put Stigimolic as its own genus again. Either way, Pachycephalosaurus and its relatives are fascinating and unique dinosaurs. And it really just goes to show how wide of a variety can exist in nature. It is absolutely amazing.